All right, so I didn't film it. I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen now. I did go yesterday and just buy the new piece. You can see it nice in there. Um, it was 93 bucks, my cost. See right in there, got a nice new one. So we'll clean all this glitter and shit out um, at some point. So a couple of things, we are busy as f today. I gotta finish this thing today. It's getting a turbo, completely different video. Um, I brought a turbo up from Florida because uh, that's where his parts truck was at. So we're gonna get that turbo out. I gotta pull this toolbox out. I'm gonna be working out of here. Um, I got a truck, I got a, a fourth gen coming in tomorrow. By the way, none of these marks are me. Just wanna let you guys know that. Um, but we got a fourth gen coming in tomorrow for the, we gotta pull the dash. We got a fourth gen coming in on Monday and we have a third gen coming in on Tuesday. And I have to get all of these projects done by next Friday because we are picking one up. Uh, I got another job going down to Miami. And then we also have the PCM finally coming for that black truck. So we gotta get five trucks done, including this one and this one. So I gotta get seven trucks done this week. This one's having idle problems and just a, a bunch of different issues. Um, and yeah, so let's go over this. Got new headlights because as you guys know, I decided to send it to Florida with this headlight out and this headlight working. And I knew the brakes were grinding before I left. I know, I'm a dumbass. Y'all can roast me in the comments. But it is time to replace a rotor. So, I think, oh, okay, cool. The bolt's still in there. I thought the bolt was missing because when I took a picture of this before, but yeah, that rotor is uh, pretty much gone. So hopefully it didn't overextend the piston in the caliper. If we didn't, we're gonna reuse it. So I gotta do that. Hopefully it doesn't fall out. Whoa, bam, caught it. Aha, and that's what else we got. We got shocks. So I got drilled and slotted rotors, Detroit axle. That's what I use. We got pads. We got shocks. Yes, I went the, deep, the cheap route on the Detroit axles. So I'm gonna finish this video out with a little bit of an explanation of what we're doing. So while I'm working, here's my goals for the next two months, all right? So there's that one. I'm pretty sure there's another rotor um, underneath all that. Yeah, there it is. Oh, bam. Get that rotor out of there. Okay, drilled and slotted. And people get mad at these, me for these because I'll put these on facing the opposite direction, which it doesn't matter which direction you put those. Yes, technically, if you want everything to go towards the inside, you put them this way forward. If you want everything to go to the outside, it doesn't matter. So here's my goals, all right? We have three projects going on right now. Three, technically four if you wanna count the Dakota. I don't know what we're doing with the Dakota yet. Um, so first things first, Bertha, we're going to finish this project. The only thing that this truck needs physically is doors, a tailgate, shocks, brakes, front control arms, and two gauges up on the pillar and the headlights. So the headlights will be done today. The brakes will be done today. I still need, I had someone offer me doors. I haven't been able to go out and get them and I still need a tailgate. I'm going to ignore everything else. Um, I'm gonna throw some more paint over that. Uh, probably throw those temporary rockers in for now. Um, knowing that this is a temporary truck, because what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to find a shell of a mega cab and just take my drivetrain and put it in that. I think that's gonna be the easiest alternative. Um, but that's it. So get the brakes, the shocks, the headlights in, and then all we need, tailgate, doors, paint the top of the cab, that's three, and then control arms and two gauges. So we only need a couple of things left, and then this project is 100% done. I'm not worried about doing a second gen swap, I'm not worried about doing exhaust brakes or any of that. Physically, I just want this project done. This is my work truck. It would be cool to have an exhaust brake on it down the road, but right now, 
I'm not going to do that. I, I'm not going to do the exhaust brake. Um, it's just, it's a ton of extra money that I'm going to throw into this because not only when you do the exhaust brake on these trucks, you have to also do 60 pound valve springs and I'm just not in the mood to do all that. And then it just all the labor and shit. So it's not worth it. I'm going to scratch the second gen swap idea on this truck. It's a work truck. At some point I might come in here. I definitely think I'm going to come in here and make more brackets to go from this plate over to here. But that's nor here nor there and maybe a winch down the road. But that's one of those things as I acquire them, I'm not worried about it. I just want this project 100% done because the next thing we're going to do, the second project I have going on is the turbo to cord. So we are going to be getting the turbo kit. We're going to be lowering it. We're going to be getting wheels and tires for it. I'm basically rebuilding what I wanted back in the day, my 96 Accord. But that project is for the other channel. So I'm not going to bore you with that. But that's project number two. And once that's done is, uh, is project number three. I'm not going to tell you guys what we're doing with this thing because I get a bunch of comments bitching about it's a 600. I said we were going to do a 750 swap. People are still bitching about that. So I'm not even going to tell you what we're doing with this thing. But let's just say this thing is going to make over 200 horsepower. We're going to leave it at that because we're going to be doing a lot of drag and roll racing with that. But point remains the same. Let's get Bertha done. Um, I'm not worried about like little pieces of body damage here and there because I understand that this is a work truck. Like you can see this piece was from me when we went, when we took that one bed to the scrapyard, it came down. So let's get everything done. I'm not going to bore you with any of the time lapses and shit. We're just going to swap everything out. I got to get the shocks. The rear shocks are easy. The front shocks I'm not looking forward to doing, but let's get the headlights done first because those are the easiest part. All right, so I haven't filmed none of this. I've been on the phone with a customer the entire time. Um, so we got the rear rotor on both sides. I put them on the way that you guys like them because I know I'm going to get shit in the comments because they put them on the other way. I don't care. Um, I feel like they bite better the other way, but that's just me. But we got those on. Both calipers are seized. Actually, I don't think this one's seized, but I'm at the point in my life where if one side's bad, I'm replacing both sides. I don't want to get down the road and realize that it's you know like something failed you guys see the front wheels off um i had an abs light it's one of those i bought this truck at 250,000 miles it has 337 on it this wheel bearing is gone you guys see, hear that that wheel bearing is gone all right so that's why the abs light came on you can see all the little particulates so i went to get wheel bearings from my supplier and uh they're just way too much it was 600 bucks for two and then they wanted 1200 bucks for the axles so we're not going to do that um, i'm just going to get online and order them but we did get two calipers i got these they were about 176 bucks my cost going to take the other calipers back to get my core charge um, this is the original rotor so i'm doing everything as correctly as possible Everything's new. If I do one side, I'm doing the other. If one caliper is bad, I'm going to do the other side. You can see just how caked out that is, which is fine. It is what it is. I kind of expected I was going to need a caliper. I didn't expect to be able to do the front brakes, but you know, all this stuff. We're not doing brakes. The brakes are perfect. The pads are great. Everything looks good. We just need wheel bearings. It's not that big a deal. It's maintenance. Do your shit. Uh, we're going to be replacing both the shocks and this and that. I don't know how long this video is going to be, so I might cut it into pieces. So if you see this as a part two, I'm sorry. I had to, the video is too long. People don't like videos that are fucking 40 minutes long. So we'll cut them into two 15 or 20 minute videos. Um, this side, perfect. See that? Nice and perfect. Um, but yeah, there was no washer on this side either, which is weird to me. Um, I thought I did this in a parking lot, so I don't know if I just lost the washer or whatnot, but we're definitely gonna do, this is a CarQuest wheel bearing. Um, did I do a wheel bearing on this truck? Guys, remind me in the comments. Did I do the wheel bearing on this side or did I just do the U-joint on this side? I'm pretty sure I just did the U-joint. I don't think I touched the wheel bearings, um, but I could be wrong. But the pads, like I said, these things, these things look great. They got great life on them. They're not unevenly worn. So we're just gonna leave uh, that as is. Um, reuse everything and then once the front are bad we're going to replace everything with the uh, and no the lines are not hanging it is on a block um, we're going to do the same thing detroit axle makes great brakes i like them i don't know how their shocks are but we have these same brakes on the dakota so let's uh start slapping the new all right so we got both sides done in the back uh obviously I have to wait to bleed it until the fronts are on i'm gonna go get both front wheel bearings off pull the axles out get them inspected 
Um, blue Loctite on the upper bolts and on the back bolts there, I use um, anti-seize. So keep that in mind. Those little bolts like to come loose on you at times, so fun, fun. But that's done. Now we gotta do the shocks, pull those off the front, and like I said, we'll inspect the axle. I know this one was replaced, but I don't know if it's the wheel bearing throwing me off that maybe there's some play in there. Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna get everything pulled. Basically what I do is I pull all the back bolts out, put one in, turn it up against the frame on both sides and it pops the thing out. Um, these are super fucking, I mean, they're not hard. Um, other than that, yeah, can't bleed them because no rotor in there. And uh, it's not worth it to me to do it anyway right now because I'll have a helper when I can do it down the road. But, yeah, so, listen to that crunch. Listen to your ABS sensors, guys, because they can save your ass at times. See that little bit of play in there? All because of this sensor is the reason that I knew. Now, obviously, I like to check everything regardless, but... That sensor coming on and then going off and then coming on and going off, that's an intermittent issue. There's only two reasons that's going to happen. Either the wheel bearing failing or it's an electrical issue. Generally, if it's an electrical issue, it's not going to be intermittent, but I'd say about 60-40. All right, so these are the ones. These were for the lift that was on this truck before, rough country. I actually don't think that these are bad. I'm still going to throw them out, but the Detroit axle ones are going in there. Believe it or not, yes, that is me being cheap. I don't know if they're good or not. I'm going to try them. They had good ratings. Um, keep in mind, my truck is reverse leveled, so basically it's lowered like three inches in the back. Um, I have it lifted up right now with the jack. So pretty much when you put these things down on a, uh, on a jack stand, you can lift the back up and it'll lift the body off to give you kind of more clearance, but keep the axle in the same place. So it takes some of that uh, pressure off of the springs also gives you a little bit more leeway to be able to get in here but these if i push this down i don't know they seem all right yeah i was showing you i went to push it down and i'm like oh that feels soft and then it didn't and then and then it started to actually work out so i think they just needed a little bit of pump uh but they're all tight we have brand new shocks um, I'm still looking for an out the back. We're getting rid of the axle dump at some point. Um, just one of those, like, it's nice to keep soot off the trailer, but at the same time, it's like, I'm just getting to the point in my life where it's like, eh, it's a little noisy. Now, if you're driving around empty, it's not bad. But once you start putting some of these trailers on there, all this stuff muffles, muffles it up here, but it still gets a little noisy. So, not a big deal. Now that we're done in the back, we're gonna start working on the front. My wife's coming to bring me some eggs and tacos, so I'll have her help bleed the back, um, and then we'll throw the wheels on. I am gonna do a rotation, so we're gonna take those, pop them in the back, and uh, I gotta get this wheel cleaned up because it was all metal for the longest time, so I'm gonna get that sprayed off as well. All right, so I went over, checked everything. Uh, this bearing, I'll show you guys. See that? Old age bearing shot. So, it's probably a Moog, to be honest. Moog's been fucking up lately. But, I got two front ones on order. Uh, gonna run Detroit Axle. They have 180 five-star reviews. This one's not bad, but like I said, you guys know the rules. So, we're gonna go throw these in the scrap pile. What bam uh, the axles are good. I went and checked the ball joints. You can see, no play. So ball joints are solid. And I want to make that point as well. Guys tell me Dodges have ball joint issues. And I have never seen a Dodge that I've owned with ball joint issues. Um, Black Betty, that truck had 570 on it just about. Never went through ball joints. Um, this truck has 337 on it. Ball joints, still good. Um, they've probably been replaced, to be fair, because they do have grease irks. I'm not sure if factory ones had them. And then my previous 06 never had ball joint problems. So, yeah, we're going to get, uh, I'm going to get these shocks. I'm going to start pulling these things out. And then this truck is going to be done. And I can close the hood. But there you go. we got the Detroit Act. I'm going to start using their stuff. If they show that they're good and reliable, I'll keep using them. 
So here's the front shocks. If you guys need the part numbers, just get this shit on Amazon, to be honest. Like, the calipers, they were cheap enough. All right, shock is done and all good. Where's the other one? So we'll do a little comparison here. These are supposedly blown. Yeah, I don't know. Can't really push down on it. All right, lunch break. All right, so we're gonna go over the battery terminals quick too. So I got that one pounded down. What I like to do, take a socket of your choice, something that'll at least go over the stub, and you don't have to beat the shit out of it. Just loosen it up a little bit. Come over here, take a little bit, take a little bit, just enough to get it loose. Loose enough that you can wiggle it, and then what we'll do is we'll come in here with a socket, and then, not a big hammer, just a little tappy tap. I can't do this with one hand, so. Sorry. Just like that. Little taps, nothing crazy. And then we'll come over here and we'll just tighten it up. Now, a lot of the Dodge electrical systems can be, you know, taken care of by doing this, cleaning your battery terminals and checking your grounds. But that's one of the biggest things of it. Now, the reason I wanted to do that and not just tighten it um, you were helping create a new connection by doing that because say you go and put jumper tape cables on something and you go to start the car, right? Sometimes you get a click. There's no power going from this one to that one. I don't know where that left off. Something hit something. So sometimes you get a little click when you go to, tr you know, take jumper cables from one car to another and oh no, there's no, nothing's connected. You come over here and you wiggle the terminal and now all of a sudden you have power to that other vehicle. Same thing applies to these battery terminals. So just because you have these tightened down doesn't mean they're making a good connection. I like to do this probably about every six months. I'll check them or if I ever have an electrical problem. So I did have an electrical problem. I'm taking care of it now. And uh, yeah, so also need to tighten up this intake here because I loosened that up the other day when I was doing the uh, that guy. So when you're doing these, I pulled ev both nuts off of both sides and just left, if you guys can see here, this is the made stud and this nut. Those two right there are how tight this battery terminal is gonna be. And I took everything off, this nut and this nut both off and only focused on the two that make the battery terminal tight. Got those and then tightened down the other two. So everything is 100%. We should have good electrical power now. Hopefully no more, no more bullshit, you can see. Right there, 13.1 volts. That one reads a little high. Um, but yeah, so should be right around like 12.4 to 12.7. Um, keep in mind, surface voltage is not the only thing you wanna look at, but you wanna make sure that these fuckers are tight. And uh, after so long, after about six months, these posts swear to these things, and you're gonna wanna check the tightness of them because they will loosen up over time. It's just how it works, so. I think that pretty much takes care of like half of the electrical problems on these 06 to 09 Dodges. But we are done under the hood. I'm gonna check the oil before we, uh, we stop here, check the coolant. And uh, this thing is 100% done. Um, when the wheel bearings come in, probably gonna slap this one. The grid heater, or the, sorry, the block heater. I just, I don't see a point in, uh, and I, I mean, I really don't need the block heater. And then I want to loom these wires down here. It's all loomed across, but I want to loom the other side as well. So, and then maybe give it a nice mount somewhere. But So as I'm recording this, I have no idea where this is going to end up in the video. But I'm going to cut it here because this video is just way too long. Coming up from Florida, running these loads, doing the maintenance on Bertha. Um, you guys haven't seen this far in yet, I'm assuming. Um, but yeah, so this video is going to be like 40 minutes long. I need to just cut it here and I'll see you in the next video. Sorry, but it's just not worth it to me to post a 45 plus minute video. Um, I'm going to try to cut out as much as I can and I've been purposely not adding certain things in because of how long it's going to be. Um, that was kind of a fuck up on my part. I should have done better with certain filming. I didn't. I'm only human. I'm only one person, but I appreciate you guys for sticking around. Um, I am currently waiting on some stuff. And uh, we should have Bertha back on Tuesday. But stick around for the next video. Hopefully uh, that video is... <sighs> I don't know when you guys are going to see this. But 
hopefully to have Bertha done by Wednesday of next week with all the parts that we had to order. So thank you guys.